The purpose of this video is to show you how to set up a spreadsheet to analyze some data. I'm specifically going to be looking at an example involving data that would have been collected from doing an experiment like Coulomb's Law involving a couple of charged spheres placed at different distances from each other and then we measure how much force there is acting between those two spheres. What we are going to have to do with the data is uh, kind of a two-step process. We're first going to come up with a way of manipulating the data so that we can line straighten it and then we're going to produce a graph from that and uh, get a best fit line with a slope. Now, if you're doing a lab where you don't have to do line straightening, you wouldn't have to worry about the first part. You'd just be jumping straight to the get the numbers in for a graph. But either way, uh, this will give you an idea of what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start inputting all my data into these boxes uh, for the uh, experiment that I would have performed. I'm going to put headings on these columns mostly for my own benefit, not because I need them so much, but because I just want to keep track of what I'm putting in each column. Now this is all data that I would have just collected uh, basically as observations or maybe it's data that would have been given to me. So I'm just kind of pulling these numbers seemingly out of nowhere, but it's because it would be based on, in this case, numbers that are actually going to show us the kind of relationship that we need uh, from the data. So what I've got so far are the forces that I measured, which would be my responding variable, as I change the distances between the two metal spheres, there's my manipulated variable. Now the problem is, uh, if you understand Coulomb's law, you know that the force varies inversely as the square of the distance. So right now if I plotted this data as is, I would get an exponential relationship and that's difficult to calculate a line of best fit, really, or uh, do any sort of area under the line. So what I need to do is set up another column where what I'm basically looking at is taking the R values, inversing in them, squaring them, so that I have values that when plotted will actually show me a linear relationship. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is just put in again sort of a, a heading for this column and I'm putting in that basically I'm doing uh, 1 over r squared. The units that I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in this is meters to the power of negative 2 since it's an inverse um, square it would be to the negative 2. Now I'll basically just tell it that for this box right here what I want it to do is make it equal to whatever is in this box, oh sorry actually let me jump back, 1 divided by whatever is in this box squared. The important part here is that you have to say that it's equal, so you want to hit the equal sign and then when you get to where you want to tell it to grab this box, don't type in the number, tell it to look at whatever is in that box. That way if you have to come back and change any of these numbers it'll do everything on the fly for you. I hit enter Wow, not exactly a spectacular number there. But I click back on that box, I click and drag down, then I go to Edit, Fill, Down, and what it'll do is it'll actually put the formula in for me so that it keeps on looking over at the box that's next to it. So it just keeps on going down along. So you can see that, for example, when I'm on this box, it switches to B6, so it's looking at whatever's in this box. And it does the calculations for me all the way down. Now I know that because uh, this is my manipulated variable, it's going to be the one on the x-axis, and this is also really going to help me out for the uh, way that I'm um, going to be looking at the, the uh, actual information that uh, I've got on the graph and manipulating it in a way that I can actually get some sort of a meaning from something, for example, like the slope. So I know that my f values are going to be the uh, the vertical y values. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this whole column, highlight it, copy it, and paste it over to here. Now this might seem redundant. Um, I put in this num these numbers already before, but now I'm kind of realizing that I need these to be the x and these the y values. Now by putting them here like this, I've now got these pairs, like these two, those are my x, y values. This is a pair of x, y values. This is a pair of xy values. These are my xy values, x's and then y's. That's the order they have to be in on the spreadsheet in order to be able to draw the proper kind of graph that I want to do for this. Now I'm going to highlight across all of this stuff, basically my x and y values. I go up here to chart, I click on it, 
And the first thing it's defaulting to is that it's choosing a column type graph. I don't want column. A lot of people choose line. We don't want a line graph either. What we want is an XY scatter graph because I have XY coordinates. So that's the kind of graph I want. Click Next. Usually if you've set things up this way, you just go right ahead and you keep on going. You don't need to change any of these things. When you get to this point, I usually tell it to just get rid of the legend because it's just junk off to the side for this kind of graph. I can give it a title now, uh, force as a function of the square. Oh, helps if I spell it right. Now I'm not saying you have to give this title. You can give any title that's going to work. Uh, I'm going to say that this is my force. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize all my x axis here. Um, it's my inverse square distance here. Those 1 over m, or 1 over r squared values. And over here, force in newtons. I'm going to throw in an x axis grid just because I think it makes the graph look better. I'm going to say finish. Now, what I'll do next is just take this graph and just drag it to make it a whole bunch bigger. You can see we have a linear relationship and when we do this inverse square sort of uh, technique of getting a linearized graph we can expect to get some plots, uh, some of the data points plotted very close together at the beginning like this kind of clump together and then they spread out that's okay, that's to be expected. Now what I'm going to do is go in here and I'm going to select any one of the data points and you can see they all highlight in green now and then I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say insert trend line when I hit on insert trend line, it's going to do a best fit line for me, and it's really going to be the best best fit line. I definitely want it to be linear, and I definitely want to show the equation, because it's going to show me an equation that's roughly in the format of y equals mx plus b. That's going to give me the slope and the intercept, because m is my slope, b is my y-intercept. I click on OK, and you can see it's drawn in the best fit line for me now and it put the formula up here. This is the y equals mx plus b format. So this number right here, 14.944, whole bunch of other stuff, that is my slope. And it is, it's been calculated very, very exactly for me here. Now what I'll do next then usually is uh, take this graph uh, that I've produced that's so nice. I just highlight, copy it, paste it into my lab, and then I can take this value and use the slope as a number to, to relate back to the formula that we have, in this case, Coulomb's Law, and calculate something like the value of k, uh, or if uh, we know k, which obviously we, don't, we do know in, in, uh, since it's a constant, we could calculate q or whatever we need to do. Okay, thank you very much.